great, man. Awesome. We'll look around here, I guess. Shall we split up? Yep. I'll find out what's in the skyscraper. Okay, and I'll look around here. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and here come a few swings and misses. We're looking at 10 times gamers demanded their money back. Look, gamers get a bad rap for being demanding, but at the end of the day, if the product doesn't meet the standard expected, should you not be allowed a refund? Sure, when it comes to the media, it's always subjective, but I think we can all agree that doesn't count for these entries. Let's go. Before we continue, we publish content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of our latest videos. Rockstar's biggest mistake. Okay, homie, let's load this shit up. The GTA Trilogy titled Grand Theft Auto The Trilogy Definitive Edition was a complete package of GTA 3, GTA Vice City, and GTA San Andreas. Not completely remade, but remastered with some asset replacements. The game wasn't expected to be a whole new way to experience these games, but it was going to be a great way to have them all packaged for new consoles in 4K, widescreen, and 60 FPS. What we thought would be a fun new take turned into a buggy mess that let players down across the board. The part that received the most hate resulting in endless memes was how comical the updated character models and sets looked, creating an uncanny valley vibe rather than a polished look. What did they do to my girl Denise? Someone put her down. Move over No Man's Sky. This entry is a record breaker. Not only is it our newest entry on this list, but now with mixed reviews on Steam, outlets are reporting that it has now surpassed No Man's Sky as the most refunded game, even with its very recent release. Fans are seeking refunds for Jujutsu Kaisen Cursed Clash due to widespread dissatisfaction with its gameplay mechanics, graphics, and overall experience. The game fails to capture the essence of the beloved anime series, lacking depth and innovation expected from such a title. With a repetitive gameplay loop, lack of meaningful progression, and numerous technical issues, this game hits all the major no-nos needed for a poopy experience. Review bombed. Please ignore the title, the bad reviews for this game upon release were totally justified, and it wasn't technically review bombed, I was just trying to be clever. Bombed? All out? Shut up. Upon release, Fallout 76 faced an absolute beating from fans due to several factors. Its release was marred by numerous technical issues, including game-breaking bugs, poor optimization, and frequent crashes. Also, and this kind of just been me, but the lack of engaging narrative quests and meaningful NPC interactions didn't meet the immersive storytelling standard of previous Fallout titles, leaving myself and others feeling disconnected from the world. The multiplayer experience alienated fans who'd come to expect a really wonderful single-player experience and left us all feeling a bit betrayed. The show is fire, though. Go watch that. De Nuvo ruins everything. Just a quick bit of backstory for those who aren't familiar with Denuvo. Denuvo is an anti-tamper technology used in video games to prevent unauthorized copying and distribution. It employs various encryption techniques to deter piracy. Which sounds good, right? No problems, surely. Well, it's controversial due to its impact on game performance and user experience. And when it gets snuck into a game last minute, watch out. Not only was it added into Dying Light 2, but it was more or less snuck in at the last second, less than 48 hours before the game's release, prompting many frustrated players to request refunds before the game even dropped, and also raising justified skepticism about its effectiveness in actually preventing piracy. Denuvo has been blamed for causing performance issues in other titles, and genuinely needs a proper overhaul. Feeling the unity. Not many publishers have f***ed up so bad that they had to rectify the situation by giving out freebies, but it should be commended. Players received free DLC for Assassin's Creed Unity as a gesture of goodwill from Ubisoft after the game's troubled launch. Upon release, the game was plagued by numerous technical issues, including bugs, glitches, and of course, performance issues. Ubisoft's decision to offer free DLC was aimed at apologizing for the disappointing state of the game and as a way of compensating those who hadn't already gone reaching into Ubisoft's pocket to get their cash back. 
It's a good standard to set for a publisher and developer to show they care about their gamers. Good stuff, Ubisoft. You be all right in my books. Forgiven and Forgotten. Dropping over $200,000 in refunds in the first 24 hours of a game's release is not an easy achievement. It's actually a much more embarrassing footnote in Bethesda's history than we're allowing it to be. This might not come as a shock, but Fallout 4 and Skyrim both have more players than Starfield on Steam. All massive titles from the same developer, yes, all being equally respected, nope. Although it had a good start with numbers, it seems that a portion of the community is starting to abandon the project. Without regular updates or visible progress, it's natural for interest to wane over time, leading to its relative obscurity in gaming discussions. And also, the PC experience was a straight up nightmare. Okay, I'm being a little biased. My PC experience was an absolute nightmare, but this thing isn't a potato. Come on, Bethesda. Switch port. We must be careful. Madam Bo will kick us out if we break something. Oh, this won't last long enough for that to happen. You will be down in no time. Fight! The Switch port of Mortal Kombat 1 suffered due to technical limitations compared to other platforms, which seems like one of the more significant oversights we've witnessed in gaming. It struggled to maintain consistent performance, experiencing frame rate drops, graphical downgrades, and longer loading times, but much like the GTA trilogy, the memes were just outstanding. The port also lacked certain features available in other versions, such as reduced graphical fidelity and missing content. Gamers aren't willing to have a tweaked experience. If the game doesn't work on a console, then just leave it alone. If the game doesn't fit, you must... I'm going to leave that joke right there, I think. Old Gen Nightmare. This barely needs explaining. Without a doubt, one of the most famous gaming blunders of all time. The failed launch of Cyberpunk 2077 was so substantial, it made it to mainstream news. My grandmother knew about this. Following the troubled release on older generation hardware, CD Projekt Red started the Help Me Refund program to assist dissatisfied customers incurring an approximate cost of $2.17 million. Let me say that one more time so we can be real clear. $2.17 million. God damn the Witcher 4 better bring in some significant dough to get them out of that nightmare. The last second could warn me how much it hurts to die. No Man's Cry. Commencing Activate. No Man's Sky ended up being one of the most amazing comeback stories of all time, rising from the ashes like the Phoenix. But in order to have an amazing comeback, you gotta be real deep in the mud, and deep it was. Hello Games' procedurally generated space simulator debuted with great excitement. I had a pre-order. I sat up till midnight. I was ready to fly, but it very quickly faced scrutiny from the gaming community. Expected features were absent and the gameplay lacked enjoyment. Although some persisted and discovered moments of satisfaction in its repetitive nature, others were left perplexed, not just by the game, but by the lies we were fed by the development team on their media circuit of madness. It was a true, true bummer, but it's pretty damn good now. Another scam. Great, man. Awesome. We'll look around here, I guess. Shall we split up? Yep. I'll find out what's in the skyscraper. Okay, and I'll look around here. Upon release of its first trailer, this game was being closely watched as skeptics didn't believe the footage to be what it was saying it was. Many saw inconsistencies, stolen assets, and in-game footage that didn't seem to be in-game. Conspiracy theorists were having a field day deciding whether it was gonna be the greatest zombie MMO of all time or a cold hard scam. Spoiler alert, it was a scam. The day before struggled to maintain momentum and faced challenges in garnering positive attention amidst ongoing scrutiny. Once it launched, the rest is history. It just sucked. And the company is still holding people's money. Give us our money, damn it. Or just give me my money. Come on. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Mojo Plays and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of our latest videos.